Deathlings, are you looking for a killer night out? Well, look no further than Victorian London's hottest party, Rap. This party's got everything. Signature Mumia cocktails, live unrolling of a 21st Dynasty mummy, and even a midday Dusty Pharaoh. What's a Dusty Pharaoh? That's the thing where we crack open the empty skull for science and everybody does a shot of the medicinal powdered mummy. <laughs> From the early 1800s and through the Victorian era, Egyptomania gripped upper-class Europeans. After the almost mythic archaeological discoveries of Egyptian tombs and kings and treasures, everybody wanted a piece of Egypt, with mummy memorabilia memorabilia being the crown jewel. Mummy madness was such that in 1833, the Trappist monk Abbot Ferdinand de Jerome said to the then ruler of Egypt, Muhammad Ali, not that one, this Muhammad Ali. It would hardly be respectable on one's return from Egypt to present oneself in Europe without a mummy in one hand and a crocodile in the other. While importing stolen mummies goes back several centuries, 19th century England is when exhibitionism, exploitation, and orientalism in the name of scholarship really came together in the form of mummy unwrapping parties, which are exactly what they sound like. In 1821, the showman and former circus strongman Giovanni Belzoni unwrapped a mummy for public spectacle at an Egypt exhibition near London's Piccadilly Circus. Over 2,000 eager people attended. This was so successful that Belzoni unwrapped two more mummies that year for an audience. At one of those unwrappings was surgeon, scholar, and opportunist Thomas Pettigrew. It would be Pettigrew who would make mummy unwrapping in vogue amongst English society. Pettigrew, who garnered the nickname Mummy Pettigrew, started selling tickets to public events where he would unwrap a mummy and also give a lecture, favored by well-to-do Londoners who fancied themselves of the intellectual sort. Pettigrew and his copycats would host mummy unwrappings in both public venues and private homes. The invitation to a mummy unwrapping party might include food, drinks, and then the main event. An invite from 1850 promised a mummy from Thebes to be unrolled at half past two. At a mummy unwrapping party, you never know what you might find. As the mummy was unwrapped and the aroma of the ages filled the room, artifacts and jewelry might be revealed. The mummy itself might present physical abnormalities, or an alleged princess might turn out to be a male mummy, as supposedly once happened to Pettigrew. One time, a mummy's head was filled with sand. I don't know, archaeology. Once the mummy was unwrapped, people usually got a scrap of bandage as a little party favor. The mummies were unwrapped without care or training, ravaging not only the corpse, but also any information it might hold. Even if the mummy was unwrapped with some skill, the body was usually taken apart with pieces given away as mementos or sold to an Egypt enthusiast for their private collection. More so, with mummies in such high demand, counterfeit mummies even started popping up. Those who wouldn't be missed after their death could end up as a genuine Egyptian mummy. Slaves, criminals, the homeless, even camels ended up as fake mummies for market. While people in other parts of Europe started to question the ethics of demummifying these mummies, it seems that Pettigrew and those like him suffered no such crisis. Pettigrew just kept right on unwrapping those mummies for money. It's rumored that some of his research involved trying to prove that Egyptians were Caucasian, not African, by measurements of their heads. So there's that. Sounds like a great guy. Eventually, mummy unwrappings did go out of style with the English. While some of it had to do with respecting the dead, and a lot of it had to do with the boredom over another mummy unwrapping. <sighs> Scholars were making a move to preserving the mummies as a bridge to ancient civilizations instead of tearing them apart for funsies. Or using them for fertilizer, like they did with mummified cats. Kittylizer. Meow. Nowadays, through CT scans, mummies can be virtually unwrapped, peeling away wrappings, skin, and muscle, all without disturbing the ancient corpse. Everything from an inscription on an amulet to the inside of an artery can be seen, all without unwrapping a single bandage. 
Mummification was a process meant to protect the body for all time. And as technology advances, we are able to respect those wishes while still learning about the past. The last public mummy unwrapping took place in Manchester in 1908 by Margaret Murray. Mummy unwrappings had already fallen out of favor by this time, and Murray faced harsh criticism. But it's worth noting that Murray was the first female archaeology lecturer appointed in the UK, in a time when archaeology was the domain of men. She also helped shape the foundations of Wicca, but that's a tale for another time. By the early 20th century, after thousands of Egypt's dead had been exported or faked for Europe's mummy obsession, the fad of mummy unwrapping events and parties came to an end. So remember, deathlings, you will die. But if you get mummified, which yes, if you talk to the right people, can still be done, your corpse just might end up the hottest ticket in town. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Patrons like Matt Knife, Emily Franklin, Neve McVeigh, Jonathan Davenport. What to do to die today? A minute to do to do a money unwrapping.